Welcome back to the what I'm calling a deep dive a la carte. Tonight we'll go ahead and talk about my vertical large tool garage. It's called a tool garage. I believe it's the large tool garage according to Ron Polk's smart trailer plans. And his garage actually would run horizontally. And so it would basically start at the end of your cabinet and it would go down how many feet that he has set out. I do not have the luxury of doing a horizontal as much as I want a horizontal tool garage because my aisleway is less than 24 inches. And so if I had my tools tucked in horizontally, I would not actually be able to get to lift them and get them out because I could not fit my body and the tool in that cavity right there. Hopefully I'll remedy that in the next trailer. Otherwise, here is my tool garage. Obviously, miter box on top. That's a DW718 I've had for years and years and years. And then down here is a new table saw for me, and it's, a, I think, a 748. It is modified to go onto the rail system for my compact workbench that I built using Ron's plans. Underneath this, you actually see uh, some sacrificial strips. I can support those five foot strips easy or four and a half foot, whatever they are. I cannot uh, actually transport eight foot goods in here conveniently so I don't have any eight foot or seven foot uh, sacrificial strips when I'm using my workbench. So that's what they are for. Okay, so the dimensions on my uh, vertical tool garage are from Excluding that little uh, three-quarter inch strip up top, which basically just holds everything up there from sliding off, from the plywood down to the bottom of that shelf right there, of that support, it is 28 and 3 eighths inches. So that's the height I have, 28 and 3 inches, to fit that in and all of my accoutrements over there. Down below, I have from the bottom of that shelf all the way down to the bottom of the plywood there for my table saw part of the garage that would be 20 and one half inches the length of that shelf there so the width of the unit is 32 and three quarter inches and the depth here is going to be 23 and three eighths inches so those are your dimensions I did build it as a unit and slid it in there and then put the top on and that top actually no I take that back that top is part of the unit because it stops right there you can see the break in the plywood and then that little piece right there is actually just an insert to create a ceiling so I can put you know continuous storage all up above there all right so what do I have in here well this is one of two what I think is only two active support systems or restraint systems that I have because I have to use screws to hold this in place while I am transporting it and only two of them so when I'm ready to take the tools out. I'll just slide this forward and you'll see how much this drops. So there you go. So that's how much that top drops. And even if there's nothing on it, the top actually drops that much. However, down here, when I pull this, it actually doesn't drop very much. And so there we have it, ready to go to take the tools out. Just to make sure I don't throw this thing away, although I'm pretty much the only one who uses the trailer. But there we go, so I don't want to throw that away. And the tools are ready to come off. So what else about the tool garage? It's fairly obvious. I mean, you can see everything that I have going on. I have extra blade storage for both 10 and 12 inch blades. There's the throat plate for my dado stack for my table saw. I have, this is a miter gauge that you would use when you're installing crown molding or other kinds of trim. Uh, it's the plastic piece that comes out and gives you those very accurate angles. I have seen that on the website, uh, the guy called Finish Carpenter, who uh, does a lot of good work, and he actually uses that quite a bit. Although, I fortunately had that before him, but it was nice to be reassured that others are using it too. Of course, I have the ever-present bank of tape measures. This is not all I have, but those are the ones that I have. And I do enjoy those fast cap metric ones as well. Down here, I have a 12-inch speed square that I've... That's come in very, very handy. I'm very happy that I have that. I bought my 6-inch speed square because of the color combination of the Stanley uh, black, with, uh, black background with the yellow. And then I have the orange one that came in a kit somewhere. It's only plastic, but I like the color contrast. So I went ahead and built a slot for that. And these, of course, just pull right out. And they're very easy to come out. And that's what the uh, situation looks like as far as how that's going to work with just a slot. And then to put it back, just slides right back down in there. So I was very happy. And I saw someone who had it and watched their video enough times where I figured out how they did it. And it wasn't really hard. 
I have bevel T's, could never find them, now I can. That's a one foot framing square held on by magnets. It's a leftover from my, uh, what few tools I have from my dad's. And I have three framing squares right there and the top framing square I bought literally because of the color. <laughs> and I'm very happy with that because I like the really high contrast. Being colorblind, that high contrast really comes in key. I do have a 50 foot tape measure, 100 foot, 50. That 50 foot tape measure again is uh, left over from my dad's tools and that's held on by a magnet. Down here, my DeWalt table saw, real happy with that. And I did have some wall space. I have very little space left in this trailer. When I bought an, a set of uh, those uh, box wrenches that I didn't really have anywhere to put them other than breaking them down, putting them in any one of my drawers over here. And so what I did was realizing that the kit that they came in actually was mountable and I had a place for it, I just mounted them there. And because they're on the end of my tool trailer, I won't forget that I have them. If I buried them somewhere else, even though I could hang them, I may forget that I have them. Other than that, this whole unit actually sits on a long drawer. That drawer is as long as uh, a couple of units, about 48 inches, I would say, and my tool garage, and then a cubby where I have a couple of uh, sawhorses and just a block of wood there. But those are independently built installed before I installed this two shelf unit which is a it's a unit all by itself the uh, shelf is dadoed in if you see right there actually dadoed it in for extra strength all the way around and I glued it of course so I've been very very happy with it the only thing I have is a little bit of sag right here there's a lot of flop there and that's why really that support but because of the weight of this saw close to what 50 pounds I worry about that shelf although this shelf really hasn't done a lot of sagging I mean that's a fairly stiff shelf there you have it there is my large tool garage very happy with it I would like horizontal but the vertical works because of that that very narrow aisle way there you have it uh, not quite sure what we'll uh, deep dive into next in the a la carte hope you enjoyed it